Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. <laughs> that shot better make the video. The Olympics are currently wrapping up and I was able to watch one of my favorite events, gymnastics this year. I was a competitive gymnast for 12 years and we're back here in North Carolina at my old gym, Everest, to go hang out with Emily Shields, one of my old teammates. She was on the national team three times, so I think she knows what she's doing. Gymnastics is one of the most beautiful sports. These women are throwing their bodies through the air and when they land on the ground, sometimes they're experiencing the same forces as being tackled by two football players. Now I might not have been on the US national gymnastics team, but I'm coming out of retirement today just to put my body through the test. Female gymnasts are typically small and light. This allows us to have a very good ratio from strength to weight. And that is incredibly necessary because we have to hurl our bodies through the air. You'll notice we have broad shoulders and our legs are incredibly muscular and strong. These are all necessities to being able to perform these skills at a high level. Guys, this is my friend, Emily Shields. We were teammates together way back in the day. <laughs> um, but she's one of the few that actually has made it all the way from Olympic trials to being a gymnast in college. And it is truly amazing. So we are talking about the forces that the body experiences yeah. with gymnastics. And you know firsthand about those forces. Yeah. What have been your biggest kind of obstacles um, injury wise, <laughs> which there's a couple, <laughs> there's a couple. Uh, and those forces that you experience on the body. Unfortunately, when I went to college, I did get some injuries. Like the first one, you know, I broke my hand on the vault table. The impact of the table kind of snapped my hand in half. Next injury I had was on floor. It kind of just opened up too early. And yeah. Like hyperextended my knee. Whole body ache. Fractured my patella tendon. There's like little like aches and pains that go through your body that just like of happen. Course, yeah. You know, like there has been so many torn Achilles that have happened. Some people say, oh, like my calf hurts today, and the next day it, it goes. Just explodes. It, it just explodes. It's crazy to think, you know, how much your body like forces like on the beam on the bar on the vault you know floor but when something happens it's like yeah. you it's like in shock it's crazy yeah clearly gymnasts are generating enough force to break their joints and limbs but how does it differ in each event now let's dig deeper into the four events of women's gymnastics balance beam uneven bars floor and vault to see what kind of forces and challenges there are with each but we'll start with beam growing up i hated beam but it was my best event and I think it's because I was so terrified of the balance beam because it's only four inches wide and it's four feet off the ground. And you can't wobble left or right because seriously, your center of balance has to be directly down that four inches. And if it's not, might as well say bye to the balance beam and hello to the mat. So whenever you see a gymnast flail her arms and lean backwards, trying to get her balance back on the balance beam, nine times out of 10, you'll see her collapse back over and try to bring her center of mass back over the balance beam. To me, balance beam is so impressive because these young women are throwing themselves over four inches of wood, landing within one second. And normally within that second, they have rotated their body three or four times. Oh, I'm so ugly. And I step backwards. <laughs> Moving on to our next event in the rotation is bars. Emily, thankfully, still has her giants that she can pull out of her pocket and just whip around. And I really want to talk about these because they are a freak of nature. Uneven bars is one of my favorite events to actually see physical forces at play on a gymnast body. From basically the rotation of a giant to how they release from the bar to how they even throw their body from the top bar to a release to the bottom bar. It's all just mind blowing. So as you can see in Emily's Giants, you can physically see the bar moving with her because she is creating so much force on the downward motion of her Giants. Right here, you can see all of the potential energy being gained. And then when she basically whips her toes around the bar, you see the release of the kinetic energy that throws her around. So you see this pull, 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 pull weight, and then you see the bar release and flip back over. And to me, that is the strength of a gymnast. They're experiencing two to three times the weight of their normal body underneath that bar. And then when they release, they're getting heights of about 10 to 20 feet in the air. Okay, so we're on bars and I haven't done a kip in ages. Emily does them daily and weekly. 
Um, so we're going to see Emily's beautiful kip and then we're going to see what a retired gymnast kip looks like after 12 years of not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is, is like my body knows it's in there. Yeah. Like my body knows it's there and it can do it. It just like won't show up. It's yeah. like, um. into a kip. In gymnastics, we used to do those like no problem. Oh yeah. You whipped them out, no problem. My shoulders right now. That's so funny. That was good though. Thanks. It's there. Whew. Guys, I can't even tell you how bad my arms hurt from yesterday and doing kips. Like the muscles right here along my body that I haven't used in probably years hurt. It's the little tiny muscles that gymnasts use that I just don't use anymore. I think the biggest remembrance I have of gymnastics is I felt like we conditioned and we trained yes, so, so much. much. Yes. And the thing that like a lot of people don't realize is like it's not the practicing of the skills. Yeah. Like we I feel like how many hours do you feel like you spend in a practice just working out? I mean, when I was back in the lead just working out, like a day I would be in here a good 7 to 8 hours. Uh-huh. Now in college, you know, NCAA rules, we only can train 20 right. hours a week. So we're only in the gym every day, maybe four hours gotcha. at max. So just that difference, how much you're training, you know, in club, you know, you're conditioning, you're working yeah. out, you know, there's not as many injuries if you're kind of Right, because you're building those muscles exactly. constantly, yes. which yeah. is like a good thing because then it translates to less injuries. Yes. But, you know that body experience so much force. Like you said, sometimes it's just a, like a freak landing and yeah. it's, it's game over. It's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about floor because to me, this is where you can really see the force of the gymnast impact on the ground and just how much energy they're generating from their tumbling passes. Speaking of force, we need to talk about the queen of floor herself, Simone Biles. When she does her trick, the Biles, she generates 1,560 joules of energy to hurl herself through the air. With that much kinetic energy, you could throw a tennis ball straight up at 238.05 meters per second, and it would reach a high of almost three kilometers. That's almost as fast as a bullet. We've talked about the force she generates when she's in the air, but what about when she lands back on the ground in that impact? She's generating more impact than an adult alligator does when they bite someone. That's 1,351 newtons of energy that she is throwing into the ground and it's three times her body weight. And if you don't land correctly with that amount of energy being drilled through your body into the floor, things are gonna get ugly very quickly, which is why you see the most injuries surrounded by floor. Now we're gonna talk about vault, my least favorite of the four, because you're running full speed at something that's not going to move and then you're going to hurl your body over and then you're gonna land perfectly on the ground. Speaking of vault, I wanna take a look at Simone's vault from this past Olympics. We're gonna look at her body position and see why she did have that giant step at the end of her vault. When we look at Simone's vault, we know that she's supposed to do a two and a half but she got lost in the air. So she goes into this, she does her round off, she takes off, she hits the springboard, she pushes off the vault, then we start to see that rotation, you see her pull her arms in, allowing her to spin faster, but then we see her start to release and throw her arms out, that stops her rotation, but if you look at her head, it is still to the right, meaning that she still wanted to continue rotating, which means she was lost in the air. So as she comes down, she absorbs all that force on the ground and then takes a step forward because her body was not ready for that landing. 
that was such a big amount of force that it caused her to step forward with that much energy. What is the skill that you have like landed and you're like, holy smokies, I felt like all the force like on my body right. like landing. I would say a skill that I landed and I was like, oh my gosh, like my body just went shock was probably either a double rabian on floor, like just uh -huh. the impact, like if you don't do it for a while, it's just like, it's your body, lot. like just whole, like I gotta walk it out. Yeah. Or like at Georgia, our mats are pretty hard. Uh -huh. So on bars, like I do a double layout off bars. The first one when I came back from my injury, like I did one and I was like, like embrace myself. Like, oh, like <laughs> wow, that was a hard landing, but yeah. okay. So just like the impact, like you kind of have to, at times you have to hold your breath a little bit. Like, yeah. oh, okay, that hurt a little bit, but let me just walk it off, shake yeah, it yeah. off. It's different. It's intense crazy. sometimes. Oh, yeah. I remember being younger and like when you would stick something and you would be like, I'm gonna walk yeah, over there. I'm gonna walk over there. Be right back. Yes. Like yes. you would get yourself together. Like when you would get oh, a yeah. stinger in your ankle if you oh, landed yeah. incorrectly so on it. floor and you'd be like limping around. Like, oh yeah. Okay, okay that stung a little bit, but yeah. I'm gonna go again. We're gonna do it again. It's yeah. gonna be great. Oh yeah. Today has been great catching up with you, Emily. Uh, thanks for letting me come back out and do all the gymnastics things with you and talking about yeah. physics of gymnastics. Of course. It's been 10 out of 10. I know, I had fun seeing you. It's been great. It's been and you like coming back doing skills? I <laughs> I'm so bad. <laughs> Guys, if you want to check out Emily and what she does and keep up with her life in gymnastics, check it out right here. Link will be in the description to her Instagram. I think it's like underscore Emily underscore shield. Shields. Underscore. <laughs> underscore. <laughs> That's stupid. Underscore. I got to change it. <laughs> I'm going to change that. Eventually one day it'll be one okay. Day, yeah. <laughs> when you put it all together and you look at the forces of gymnast experiences, how many hours they spend training in a gym and how hard they work to maintain the body strength to be at the competitive level that they're at, it makes me feel like they're the best athletes in the world. And that's why I think gymnastics is one of the toughest sports on the body, mentally and physically. As a previous gymnast, I understand how important training and keeping my mind and body sharp is, which is why I love using my Raycons to work out. Raycon earbuds give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design for a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by making great sound for everyone. Their wireless earbuds start at half the price of premium audio brands. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors, patterns, and a variety of fit options. So no dangling wires or stems. The company was co-founded by Ray J, and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson are obsessed with Raycons. If you give them a try and you're not a fan, Raycon has a 45-day free return policy. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash TKOR to get 15% off your Raycons. By purchasing a pair of these Raycons, you're helping out the channel in more ways than you know and it allows us to keep doing awesome projects. What is your biggest advice for other gymnasts in the sport going forward that are trying to make it like you? So I would just say like never giving up. If you have days that you know you're feeling tired, you don't want to do it, just take a step back, go back to the basics. If you like have mental blocks, I know yeah. some people have mental blocks. I had some when I was younger. Oh, just yeah. going back to the basics, you know, and you just have to have love for it. You have to like, you, have to, you have to enjoy it. If you're not like enjoying it, having fun with it, it's gonna be hard. It's yeah. gonna be hard on you. It's gonna be hard on in life in general. Yeah. So yeah.